But today we're going to talk about discipleship and also um, having a heart to make disciples as we uh, talk about us winning. Because that's how we win. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We overcome the kingdom of darkness by, you know, making disciples. Um, so before we start, I got two questions. You know, you can give answers and also ponder on them. First question is, what does a winning church look like? If you want to give a, a public answer, that's cool. If you want to just ponder on it, that's cool, too. Well, at least I need one public answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when in church, for me, what it looks like is uh, we going out and do the work, and when it goes, uh, bringing the souls up to the Lord. Yeah, <laughs> good. good answer. Anyone else? Yeah, I think about unity. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, there's something that Pastor said at uh, one of the house churches that we went to at his house, but he said something along the lines of how can we win people outside if we're not you know, trying to restore relationships within like mm -hmm. our church and stuff like that. So definitely like, yeah, unity, like being on one accord and stuff like that. No, that's good, very good, very good. Okay, a uh, follow-up question is, um, what do we need to do in order to win? Mm -hmm. If you got the unity, you got to win it, so what do we need to be doing in order to win? Become more unified and more souls. That's right. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> summary. Basically, that's a good answer, but whatever you're thinking, just dwell on it. Say la. Say la means pause. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> so, no, say so say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Say yeah. la yeah. on your answer. We were talking about saying that. Say la. We read a, we read a, uh, a song and they say say la. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, so say la on your answers or whatever the thoughts of, of, of are on your heart right now as we get ready to dive in. Can you repeat the second question? Oh, the second question is uh, what do we need to do in order to win? Thank you. No problem. I definitely appreciate those heartfelt prayers, man. No, and it encourages. I think I, I can. I think I can speak for Martin. Also, like when we get feedback from y'all, it encourages us. You know? mm -hmm. Especially when you just sitting here and then you ask a question, we just looking at y'all. Nobody <laughs> saying nothing. I'm like. <laughs> Right or wrong, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, something. But uh, let's um, look at a very familiar passage of scripture. Let's look at Matthew 28, 18, and 20. You really should all know this in my heart, right? Matthew 28, Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. and point out all of the words in which Jesus is telling us to do something. Like, look, just pick out the words. Just say them out loud. This is a group participation. Go. Okay. <laughs> make. make. Okay, make, disciple, okay. Baptize. Baptize. Teach. 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 That's the third thing. Remember. Mm. Okay, okay. Let's see, remember. Okay. 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 Okay.
So the Greek word for make, make disciples. And look, I've been practicing how to say this. And now I right. forgot. <laughs> you should have recorded yourself saying it. <laughs> well, I've been saying I've been saying it all evening, right? <laughs> but it's Matthew two vote. So, uh, yeah, that Greek word, matetevo, uh, make disciples, is the key phrase in this verse because all of the words, other words, support it, right? Go baptize, teach, right? So in these verses, Jesus is commanding us to what every nation of every nation? Make disciples. Make disciples. It sounds easy, right? Yeah. So in these verses, Jesus is commanding us to go out and make disciples of every nation. Yeah. The other three words shows us, you know, what is entailed in obeying that command. You know, we have in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then John back door in 1 John 5, 3, but the, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And then right here we have one of the biggest commandments and we love peace slack. Love peace slack. Low key. I'm trying to be optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's enough, right? I'm just saying. You got a daily dose of optimism. I got a lot of once a month. Once a month. Once a month. Once a month. <laughs> so to accomplish disciple making, we must do what? We must be. Three words. Yeah, those words. Going, yeah, yeah. Going, making. Going, teaching. Going, making. Going, teaching, baptizing. Going, teaching, and baptizing. This is how we're going to accomplish disciple making. So to make disciples, you must then go. Get out your comfort zones. Get out your little, you know, our little cliques that we have. You know, just yeah. be prone to do it. I don't think nothing wrong with it. We just, you know, we just click better with certain people. It is, it is what it is. You know, but that ain't a part of the commission. Right. As long as we clicking with that person and going out right. and attempting yeah. to make disciples and, and doing that is just not a phone call, a text message, hey, yeah. you good? Oh, then I go to the house church and be like, you know what? I reached out. Right. They ain't trying to hear me. Right. I tried. We're going to pray for that, brother. No, we're going to pray for you. How about that? We're going to pray for you. And, and yeah, that's what we're going to do. But yeah. So you got to go out, get out your comfort zone. Take your witness with you. Remember, we represent Christ. You know, we don't have the obligation to conform to them. Yeah. Even when I'm talking to myself, even when they, you know, getting at you foul and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, yeah, take your witness out to the world and share the gospel with the intent, though. With the intent, with bringing them into the faith. Yeah. Not just going out. And there's a check off the list for right. you know, I done preached the gospel to somebody. Uh, yeah, it's the intent and really you should be caring for their souls. Like we literally hold the keys to the kingdom to these people. You know what I mean? Especially in the uh, this old dark generation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, okay, cool. Um, so both being a disciple and making a disciple are intrinsic. To what it means to be a Christian, right? We're gonna talk about some Greek words. We're gonna talk about uh, the Greek word to, of disciple and actually making disciples. The Greek word for disciple is uh, mathetes. There you go. You know, he said mathetes. Oh, I forgot to say it. said So drop the last two syllables. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you got right there. This means Can disciple. You spell that? So make disciple is the verb. Yeah. And that's the noun. Yeah, yeah this is the noun version. Yeah, yeah, disciple. So just it's, uh, M E 
M A T H. Well, okay, about the devil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta put the devil. You gotta put the devil. It's, it's important. It's M A T H E with a line on top of the yeah. T E U O with the line on top of the O. Okay. And then Matetes. Matetes. It's M A T H E with that line on the top. T E S. Yeah, same thing. That means like disciple. This is one who follows after and seeks to learn from another. Uh, practically, uh, for me, I, I made disciples in the gym. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I made people, I had people go into the gym with me and they want to become like me, train like me, stuff like that. So that's a practical example. Um, a disciple is not only one who partakes in information, but also seeks to become like the teacher. Remember Luke chapter 6, verse 40. Somebody pull that up for me real quick. Just one person. Luke 6 40. Moving under not greater than his teachers. <laughs> <laughs> this Bible, man. This Bible, bro. This Bible, bro. So when he is fully trained, he will become like his teacher. There you go. And the important thing we must remember is that discipleship means a person is modifying their lifestyle. That's extremely important because you have a lot of people that come into Christendom by faith, but they don't. Modify their lifestyle to become disciples of Christ. They think that okay, I can still do what I, right. what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? But we have to modify our, our passions, our desires, our wants, our and all of that is transformed into what God wants. Because we got the Spirit of God within us. Yeah. You know, we're not doing it by ourselves. We got the church. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. That reminds me of that scripture uh, where it says the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. A lot of people read that and be like, the Lord's gonna give me what I want. But it's really saying the Lord is going to, whatever your, like, whatever the Lord desires is going to become your desire. Yes. That's what they do. Yeah. yeah. That's good, bro. That just reminds me of it. No, that's good. Good. Thank you for that, bro, because a lot of people do think that, like, you go to certain places, certain churches, and they'll have you like, okay, God wants to give you what he wants to give you. But then in their context, it's a Bentley, it's a... Uh, Rolls Royce, it's a mansion and all that stuff. It's like, what you gonna do with that with the kingdom, bro? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're gonna have people in your mansion, you know what I'm saying, it's, uh, uh, serving the saints and doing all this other stuff. You're gonna be picking homeless people up in your Bentley and taking them, doing <laughs> doing good work. Like, are you gonna do the good works that God commands us to do? Yeah. Or is it for a selfish desire? Yeah. God wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like dough, you know what I'm saying? But God wants us to, as, uh, as disciples, modify again, modify our lifestyle, modify everything for his desire. We also see the term not only used for Jesus' disciples, but we also see the term used for the Pharisees' disciples and John's disciples. We see that in uh, Mark chapter 2, verse 18. So I'm going to pull that up real quick. Is it 218? Yeah, 218. One of John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Oh, good. So we see this same word, method text, used to speak of the followers of John and the followers of the Pharisees. Um, so the word, now now I'm going to the word that James mentioned, Matthew Tales. I, I say Matthew Tales. That's how I learned it. <laughs> That's how I learned it. When we, when we had a little disciple group, you know what I'm saying, uh, years ago. And, and, and that word stuck on us, Matthew Tales. That, that's the verb version of Matthew Tales. That's to make disciples. So a verb is an action. It's making disciples. Right? The action uh, of creating another, of, of causing another to become a disciple. This is going back to what we read in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Um, Jesus' command of the Great Commission was for us to go make, for his disciples to go make disciples, and his disciples' disciples go make disciples, and then those disciples go make even more disciples. It's hope you never anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So as we're going forth, we're reproducing. And as we know, uh, looking at John chapter 4 and John chapter 15, the fruit that we're bearing, um, this, the, the fruit that's bearing, that's, those are disciples. Those are people that's coming up with us, you know what I'm saying, walking alongside us, and we're helping conform them into the uh, likeness of Christ through the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, so uh, Jesus commanded them to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, and also teach them all that he commanded. And this is going again, a disciple alters their behavior. You know what I'm saying? He didn't just say, 
baptize them oh, and let them do whatever they want. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To obey. obey. You know what I'm saying? So to observe, observe right. all I commanded, and you know what I'm saying. Um, observe all, all all I commanded, and you know teach His ways. So I got I do have a question. Uh, what part does our local church play in making disciples? I have a question. Uh, are, you going, are you going to tie in the verse we just read? With the, um, the Mark. Mark 2 18. The Mark, no, I just, I had to read that to show that uh, the word, the same word for disciple is used for John's disciples and, um, and the Pharisees. You know what I'm saying? As I was giving the definition oh, of disciple. That's why I was ready. So you can see it's in there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah, Tony, my bad. <laughs> but, um,. So, yeah, the question was, what part does the church, the local body, play in making disciples? What role? Yeah, what role does, what role does your brothers and sisters play while you, in, in helping you make disciples? <coughs> yeah. I think, that, like, accountability. Because I think our lives have to, you know, we're not perfect, but, you know, there are areas in our lives in which we no. struggle, so accountability like hey how you doing with this because mm -hmm. if there might be an area of your life and you go out trying to make disciples and they might be struggling with that same thing you can't help them because you ain't get yourself together so i yeah i think accountability yeah that's a pretty good answer and one more person want to try to shoot shoot the answer for me uh i would say um to act as like a home base pretty much so mm -hmm. like training and equipping Period. believers to go out and know how know how to do it first. That's yeah. good. That's it. I ain't wow, that's the answer I was looking for. <laughs> 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 Your answer was good. <laughs> <laughs> Your answer was good. It's the headquarters. Headquarters. You go you come back and you a hey, so I'm dealing with this person, man. I don't he he says he doesn't have time for woo, but he's always at the gym. You know what? Hey, I got somebody hey, I go to the gym all the time. What gym he go to? I'll link up with him. You know what I'm saying? Okay, this person dodged you. Hey, let's go. Uh, this person like to eat here. Now I know somebody that worked there. We get a discount, bro. Let's go together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like stuff like that. Like using each other's gifts. Because remember, yeah. every person in here has a spiritual gift, whether you believe it or not. You know what I'm saying? You might not have known. You might not know it yet. But in the community is where it's brought up and found. You know what I'm saying? So using each other's spiritual gifts to help God conform somebody into a disciple. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Then not only that too, just to go back to you know when I said that we naturally click up, you you may not just really connect well with that person, but somebody in the body may connect better right. with them. Yeah. So like you know it's good to, cause we'll be we'll be the use right. We saying we come in here, we we throw these names in the hat, but we never see them. So you know I I tend to say they're imaginary. <laughs> Mark be telling me to chill out. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. But but if you're not reaching out to us for help, what are we supposed to do though? Yeah. You know, like what are we supposed to do? We gotta utilize the body. There's times like I, I, like a lot of the cats that Martin and I be trying to reach, if they don't if they don't uh, cling to him, then they'll cling to me, and then vice versa, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you know, yeah, good deal. Okay, so. Uh, this is a question to ponder for all of us. What do you think your role is in making disciples? It's just, if you want to answer, you can answer, but what do you think your personal role is would be in helping the church bring up disciples? What do you think you can do to help, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to answer. If you want to answer, that's cool. You, know, you don't have to answer if you want to. Well, I would say more of a, uh, I guess like a mind shift where people are like, I want to serve in church. Most of the time, people think, okay, I'll be an usher or go clean the yeah. pews or whatever. But I think that your question better poses the right role. Like, if I'm in a certain church, that can look like what you just said. Like, hey, I can, I can relate to somebody who's in that field, and they brought up that person's name. Let me go serve over there. So when's the next time you're beating up with such and such? Yeah. Let's see if we can sit down and introduce. That'll be more of let me serve in the church. Yeah. Uh, versus, hey, do y'all need any extra people to you know, fold the chairs? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, yeah. you know, yeah. a, lot a lot of times people ask fun. that question, like, how can I serve? Right. Mm -hmm. And 
that's the answer that they get. Okay, well, guess what? We got uh, break up, you know, break down and, and set up to yeah. so be here an hour and a half early. Mm -hmm. All right, I guess I'm serving now. Like, yeah. I guess it's cool. Not even realizing that that the answer is out of the field. Yeah. And so, yeah, water, planning, yeah. praying to God to cause them to grow. Yeah. You know, it's extremely important for us to. Um, take discipleship seriously because this is not something that just leadership does or somebody who has the spiritual gift of evangelism you know what I'm saying does this is for everybody but Jesus said this to all his disciples all 11 of them now still standing and then they trickled it down to the rest of them and they trickled it down now it's, mil it's, it's millions of us you know what I'm saying around the world and we're supposed to all be making disciples we have the power to change the world through the word of God through prayer and by the Holy Spirit that lives within us can I add something? Yeah. Can I add something? Yeah. Um, you made a point that it's not just on leadership. The other side of that mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. us taking each other seriously. Yeah. And we worked on personhood. We worked on that for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so we got to see a little more intimately, well, I'll say it like this, we got to see what anybody was willing to share at the time. Yeah. Because the hope is that we're all transparent and that we're all just kind of being as transparent as, as we can, yeah, you know. Yeah, but yeah, the truth uh, is, okay, we're not. Let's just not act like we are. Like, we're not, we're not being fully transparent for whatever reason, and it's fine. The thing is, what we have learned about each other, don't be afraid to use each other in that regard. And going to your point about clicks, yeah, it's clicked up, but if I know that you have something, then I'm gonna give you that. Like there are people that have come through my daycare. I'm like, I don't know what to do with you. Really, I really don't. I love you. I love what we have. But for your growth and edification, I don't really have nothing for that. Here, I'm gonna link you up with this person because I, you'll just love her. That's that's all. You'll just <laughs> just trust me. Just trust me. You'll love. Her, you know. And and typically that that works. Um, I have gotten really good at that with daycare, but just within the context of our local church, it's just being willing to take each other seriously and knowing that despite whatever feelings I may have or not have, that you are still valuable for this goal yeah. and that's for disciples to be made of all nations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah just going nice. back to that, to that, to your point though too, I was gonna say that. Think about when we were studying personhood, that list that we had, what 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 aspects of my personhood do I need to crucify and let go? And then what aspects of my personhood it's gonna allow, you know, where I can redeem it and, and it can be utilized. Yeah, right. you know, we have to take that serious though, because we are prone to go right yeah. back to yeah. to go right back to those things we've been working on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we tend to, to go to fall back, especially in time of stress, especially in time of testing, yeah. you know, the hard time and stuff like that. So we gotta really pay attention to that because we gotta think about the danger here that people do not believe in Christ, they are condemned. Yep. That's yeah. the reality of it is. And then they're going to die in their sin, and then we're going to have to answer for it right. one day or another. You know what I mean? Like, I already got to answer enough. So I'm, not to, I'm not trying to go and be before everybody like, you know what I mean? Like, take, like these people's souls are at risk of, of condemnation. You know what I'm saying? And we hold them keys, that gospel. And then I, I, I told y'all how I felt when you started about this episode. Yeah, you no, just, no, 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 no. You just, you just bear with me. But, but going back to that natural bent, like our natural bent to stuff, we can get hung up on mentally on, man, I'm just not going to be good enough to do this. Because hmm. I keep going back to this. And why can't I get past this? And then you find yourself naturally in the cycle of, I don't know about men. I don't know if that works like that for men, but for women, like, there's this beating up of self that happens when you can't do the things that make you feel more closer to God or more womanly or more sufficient as a woman. Like you just start cycling through all of these things and then that becomes priority because I just need to be okay. Yeah. And then there's all these people out here who are looking at you like, hey, so I don't know, you know? Yeah. And so not getting so thrown off by what your natural events are and taking those things to the cross just as much as the problems. And I'm doing that not because problems are not, 
existing, but because sometimes we make the problems way more, I'm, I'm talking about myself, yeah. we make the problems way more bigger than mm -hmm. the reality of what Christ has asked us in mm -hmm. Matthew 28. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that in itself is a problem, you know? Yeah. And it, it is an easy fix because really just repent and do the work. Yeah. But some kind of way, whatever the cycle is, it be cycling. It be cycling. It be cycling. You got to trust in the power of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Bro, I am going to say to him. Yeah, I'm about to go there. Go ahead. Romans we in the same vein, bro. I got Romans people pay. Pay. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I don't know if anybody paying attention to Pastor Riggs was going in on Romans 8, but I've been there ever since. I'm saying, like, we have literally been at, been given the Spirit of God to obey. Like, He gave us His Spirit to obey. He gave us His Spirit so that our mortal bodies could come alive, physical body. He gave us the spirit to pray for us when we don't know when to pray or what to pray. Like, like we got to really understand what it is, what we've been benefited as believers in Christ. Like Romans, Romans, I mean, Romans 8, all of it is fire, of course. But, you know, my favorite passage there is... Verse 11, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. I know pre-salvation, I was messed up. I know y'all seen my transformation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like that, if, if that didn't speak, if that picture didn't speak to, you know, bring that out for me at least, I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? Then the spirit bears with our spirit, verse 16, yeah. That we are children of God. I'm saying the Spirit Himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Yeah. Yeah. And even speaking to that, like that, that is the conviction that you feel. Not as that I feel bad because I sinned again. No, it's it's that. Uh, I'm, I'm a child of God and he's, he's given me the DNA to overcome what I the DNA the DNA verse 17 then hairs hairs of God yeah. the DNA and fellow hairs with Christ yeah. come on man like provided we suffer with him in order that we may be glorified with him <laughs> Verse 26, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, yeah, yeah, but yeah. we do not know what to pray for as we ought. Like, when you sit here, I know there's time. I'm just, I, it's me. I'll be like, man, okay, Father God, then we can do a little holy resume. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, for real. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> you stuck. Yeah. 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 what it is. Yeah. That Holy Spirit right there, yeah, you're like, I got you, I got yeah. you. The Spirit Himself intercedes for us with Romans too deep for words. I'm saying yeah, verse 27. For me. Verse 27. And he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the Look, to what? Paul, now, I don't hear it. I got it. Got verse of Paul. We all hear this. We all hear this. All of us. <laughs> Members of the Godhead are interceding for yeah. us right now, yeah. bro. Yeah. Two. Yeah, two. So we cover it on, on both ends. Bro, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Man, and on. he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit because the spirit in the seeds for the saint. Like, he like, 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 I got you. Yeah. The whole time, according to the will of God. Oh, what, what, what 28 say, bro? 28. And we, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. The right. all things works. This is what he really pointed out that blew my mind. I'm like, Come on, oh, you know bro. What? The all things work. Come on. Yeah. That's the part. Hmm. We struggling. 
We don't know why. We keep bumping our heads. We keep falling into our flesh. But all these things he purposed yeah. to conform us into the image of his son. I'm just saying. Yeah. Come on. I'm just saying. And then this is, the, this is even crazier, right? 29. And for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Wow. Us. So we're going to pray. That's it. We're going to pray. We got to understand who it is that is living in us. Yeah. 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 That part, though. Okay, but hold on. Hold on, wait, wait. Okay. <laughs> and then we're going to go to 38. Come on. And we're going to say, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, mm. nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing mm. will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's where your counselor should be. Period. Man. Period. Man. Anytime you're struggling, go there. Just run through Romans 8, 28. Just, I mean, Romans 8. Just run through it. Therefore, there, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Right there, he come off the dribble right. with some fire. Right. The therefore, there is therefore. I, I, I'm there for a minute. I go, I mean, what do you mean, ball? There is therefore now. Okay, yeah, I got you. You feel me? Like, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Like, hold yeah. oh, up. It seemed like he did that first. I'm like, okay, now that you got that weight off your back, okay, yeah. let me, let me right. give you the rest of this. Right. So you can be yeah. free. Yeah. Because, you know, in, in, in chapter 7, he going through, you know, he's struggling with your flesh. Right. I, I can't do what I want to do and I want right. to do and I can't do it. And it's, it's frustrating. Who could save me from this? Then he hits you with the there is therefore. I stayed there for like two days. Paul, why are you? There is therefore. Now. Okay. That. No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. God did that. God did that. He came and lived in us, and he's doing it always. So that's where the confidence should be yeah. when we struggle. Yeah. That's where the confidence should be. Like, dang, I, I don't understand. I don't, you know what? Oh, there's no, no condemnation. Okay. Oh, oh, the spirit in the sea. I need you to spirit in the sea verbally to me right now. Right, right. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> right. I got you. I feel you. I know the Romans is two weeks of words, but I need some words right now. Right. You know? Like, yeah. And then the part that keeps you read. That yeah, list that, is that, like, the list is beast mode. It's like, okay, yeah. just in so, case you didn't realize, I'm going to come to rest yeah. whatever else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It said, neither death. And then nor life. Like, first of all, like, what do you mean? Right. Like, right. Hold up. You just gonna mess my head up with that, right? Neither death nor life. Okay. Nor angels or rulers, nor things present, nor things to come. That's, really that there you go right there. Things to come. Nor powers, hmm. nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in wow. Christ Jesus our Lord. How can anybody think you can lose your salvation? Right. <laughs> After reading man. that, how? And uh, man, Ephesians come on. 1. Come on, man. My bad. Nah, you good. You good. You good. I'm, I'm, I, I, we, could, we could finish. I just want to say one thing. I heard somebody say the wicked trinity is the world, flesh, and devil. Mm. Right? Mm. We battle the world, flesh, and devil. Mm. The holy trinity is who we serve. Mm. The world, flesh, and devil are not a formidable foe to our God. Yeah. They cannot mm. hold a candle to him. Mm. <laughs> they, they can't. Bro, it's like it's like it's like Floyd Mayweather versus an uh, infant child. Who don't even know how to <laughs> hold his head up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how it is. Our God, the God that lives with us, so when, so when these negative personality traits and these negative things try to come our way, as we just read in Romans, hey, bro, spirit God's with me. Bible, what y'all, what y'all be saying? What y'all be saying? Girl, bye. Girl, bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it. I'm ready to know that word. Yes. Okay. <laughs> We did want to ask um, for you guys to to really 
because next week we're going to talk, next time we meet, we're going to talk about this. We're going to actually bring names to the table of people that we're trying to reach and people that we're trying to disciple. We, we actually we actually got to have names so we can go before the Father and actually pray for these people. You know what I'm saying? That God does a miraculous work in their heart and for their desires. We don't want to just, you know, just say, oh, I got somebody I'm working on. We'll just, we'll just have, have to pray for them. But we want to go before the Father in deep prayer on our private time and also collectively, corporately. So next week, be thinking about people. Take this week to reach out to people. Again, discipleship transforms your behavior. So if you got friends, if you got family, if you got loved ones that you're trying to reach, let them see the light of Christ that shines. Remember, we're supposed to be light and salt. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. Got any closing remarks?